Is that you? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I'm writing a, a, a family remembrance, and my grandfather was an immigrant. Oh, well, of course, there were others too. Right. He's the closest one. And so I've been thinking about it. And that's the history you've come to know. Where, where did he immigrate from? He immigrated from Switzerland. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. That's great. Um, different. That's great. Diversity, variety, inequity, country, citizenship, job, love, cultures, food. Ooh, I would put that one down. <laughs> um, that's one of the best perks of my job is getting to taste amazing food from all over the world. Um, done. That one's interesting. Done. Does anybody want to share more about that? I tried to put they get the job done. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. It just says done now, which is a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, okay, get the job done. Yeah, that's that's right. That's a good one. Came ancestors good and it, for those of you who know about word clouds hello welcome and let me be new here. Uh, what does it mean inequity okay so i'm just going to introduce real quick this is our panel of um, immigrants and students from our program who came to join us because i am a an okay representation from the program but um but uh, Naomi Oshihani mm -hmm. and Maria Guerrero and her son Diego and husband Frank and Frank, I don't know your last name, Fernandez. So we're going to be hearing from them later. But uh, Naomi asked what the word inequity means. So equity is whenever um, basically opportunities are given in a fair or equal way. It may not be completely equal, but everybody has the same opportunities and availability uh, to access things. Inequity, that in part means not. So uh, basically, and, and does anybody want to, who, anybody want to share from that perspective, inequity? I'm sorry, a synonym. Um, let's say uh, unequal, not equal or sometimes unfair. unfair unfair a lot of times we think of discrimination discrimination with inequity and sometimes people mean to discriminate sometimes they don't even realize so maybe the opportunities are not fair all right great so i'm going to switch off of this real quick thanks for uh thanks for sharing and we're going to go here. Okay, so um, I titled our presentation today Sustainable Systemic Change for Immigrants and Integration. And uh, really, we're gonna, I'm going to do an overview and not get into a lot of the details of some of these things. But um, if we hit on something and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to know more about that. Or like, what did you mean when you wrote that? Um, feel free just to pop up and say, because I'm going to try to get an overview, but I want to go as deeply as you want to go wherever you want to go deeply. So, um, but really this idea of sustainable systemic change, um, when we're talking about our program and what we do at Hope Works and our community partners really do work together. Um, we're talking about we want to not make a change just in the lives of our students, not just in the lives of those that we work with. Or, but we're talking about systemic. So we're trying to um, have an influence or an impact that goes throughout the culture in Shelby County and starts to kind of change the way people think about immigrants. Um, when we talk about sustainable, we don't want to reach in and touch a life and that's just like, that impacts you while you're in our class for a year or you know a couple of months, but how can we make this something that actually lasts and then changes for a lifetime? So um, we're really looking at a sustainable systemic change. Uh, okay. 
sorry about that technical difficulty. So uh, underneath this is a, another uh, graphic, but I'm going to tell you a little about, bit about how to get. Okay. And uh, how many of you have been a faith encourager? I know several of us have. Okay. So um, Hope Works has five major programs. So one is our adult basic education program. And that's what, when we think of high school equivalency, but that's really kind of what most people come into our adult basic education program for. Uh, we have a program that is workforce development. So people can come in and uh, work with us to get a job. And we look specifically not just a job, but we're really looking for the right job. So something that is um, offers a sustainable wage and has uh, good working conditions and it's full time and they get uh, benefits. So that's what our workforce development program. We have our PCD program, personal and career development. Personal and career development works with people who face barriers to help them address those barriers in order to be able to participate in workforce. So maybe it's addiction. So we want to work with them on addiction. Maybe they have um, a, a record, criminal record. And so they have a hard time finding the kind of job that, that they can stay with. So we want to help them with that. Or maybe they just don't have good work habits. Maybe they have a history of showing up late or they encounter problems with their boss and they give up. And um, so what PCD does is we work with them to see, okay, where are these problems? What has prevented you from being able to get or sustain employment? And then how can we help you fix that? So going forward, we can help you find that job and then stick with it. Uh, our other program is reentry. And so reentry has to do with people who are incarcerated. When they come out, what does that look like as far as being involved in the workforce and um, getting a job and keeping a job? So that's pretty interesting. And in the graphic, what it shows is all of these overlap and intersect. And um, we do a lot of handoffs and a lot of partnership within these programs. So we have our adult basic education uh, classes are going on inside the Division of Corrections. And a lot of them, when they get out, we might uh, have, we try to have somebody from our PCD program contacting them within the first 48 hours. What do you need? Do you have uh, the resources you need? And that kind of thing. Um, so it's kind of a lot of handoff and <laughs> working together, a lot of collaboration. Now, my program is the adult ESL program, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, and it really has a lot of crossover with everything except for re-entry. Uh, does anybody know why our adult ESL program might not have a lot of crossover with the incarcerated population? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so statistically, we have fewer immigrants committing crimes. Um, and when you look at that, it's largely because if they do, they'll be deported <laughs> unless they're already a citizen. So um, largely, you know, people who come in and the kinds of people who need our services, um, I must say they don't have the luxury <laughs> of committing a crime. But uh, also the, there's just maybe a different mentality as well. Uh, so that demographic is the one that just doesn't seem to cross over very often. Um, and what we say at Hope Works, if, if Ron Wade were speaking, he would say it comes down to hope and a job. We, when we work with people, we want to give them hope in Jesus Christ, and we want to help them find a job that will work for them. So that's kind of what it comes down to. And here are a couple of our anchor verses that we come back to over and over again. Uh, that really help us drive towards that ministry. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few little background. Um, ESL is a, uh, English is a second language. Uh, this one here is the mouthful I, I E L C E, 
integrated English literacy and civics education. So I call it ESL plus, meaning that we're doing ESL, but we're also integrating citizenship and civic participation as well as workforce. And then we do family literacy as well. So our program, we call it ESL because that's what everybody understands, but technically it's an IELCE program. Um, we're funded uh, in my program, we're funded by donors and by Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Um, these are federal funds and they're distributed by the state. So the, the funds come through the state and then the state will, uh, they put out a request for proposals and then we write for those funds. And so we've had this grant since 2016, when we first started. Uh, because of that, that makes us a part of the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development, Adult Education Division. And we're, that's, so adult education is Title II. So we hold all of the Title II grants, Hope Works holds all of the Title II grants for this area, the greater Memphis region. So that would be adult basic education, what we would know as high school equivalency or GED, uh, our ESL program, and then the state test. Any questions on that? What's family literacy called? I'm sorry. What is family literacy? Family literacy is, uh, so one of the things that we try to do is help our students have the knowledge and background to be able to be a part of their child's education. So uh, we want them to be able to go to the school and feel empowered to ask a question of their child's teacher, or if they get a note home from their, their child's school, what does this mean? We talk about lexile levels and test scores and things like that and kind of help them negotiate that. So it's empowering our parents to be involved in their children's education, but specifically literacy. Anything else? Nicole, did I hear you right? You're the only like, GED, what we think of as GED here in the city. Um, there are some other like so high set that when I say high set that means GED. So in Tennessee we get the high set, not the GED. So um, but yes. Uh, really funded. Yes, we are the we are the official provider of this. Yes. So there are a couple of other ways to go about it, but we are we are the like the state sanctioned and state chosen program. Yes, yes, state chosen Yes, yes. So it was held by Shelby County Schools under the name Messick, and then it was handed off to us. This will actually as a program. Yes. Sort of like that. Instead of the GED, it's actually the high school call, but it's for adult learners that are Right. Right. And the big difference between us and the Excel Center is the Excel Center goes by class credit hours. So you actually attend classes like high school classes and earn credits like you would in uh, high school. For us, when a student comes in, we test them and look at their areas that they need to increase. Like a student may come in and be like, I, I have my reading is fine. I can pass the reading test but maybe they need help with math. So we're gonna give them math and help them get there. Um, students come in through that program, they may be there three weeks and get their diploma. They may be there two years. So we just kind of do whatever is needed for that particular student. So, yeah. Other, Mary, do you have a question? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, community partnerships, you can just kind of look through this, but um, we, we are very big on working with community partners. Um, like I said, if it's going to be systemic and it's going to be sustainable, it's not going to be done by Hope Works on our own. <laughs> so we really try to collaborate and work with others. And uh, I feel like, I really feel blessed by these relationships. I feel like these are organizations that really do listen, reach out, ask questions. We refer students back and forth all the time. Um, so it's definitely a, a community effort. All right, our program. We have five locations, physical locations, and we have classes online. Um, assessments are given 
at when our student enrolls, we get assessments on speaking, reading, listening, and writing. Um, and then they're tested again after about 40 hours of instruction. That, so that way we can see how they're progressing. If they're not progressing, is there one certain thing that they've missed? We need to reteach that. Do, is, do we need to match them with a different teacher? Um, so that's kind of how we track that progress. And then we certify the students as they move up at their, uh, their levels. Right now, eight, about 80% of our students who post-test make a what's called a measurable skill gain. And that's the measurable skill gain is what the, the state and the federal government consider uh, that's how they measure our success. So uh, if we have about 80% of our students doing that in the course of one 40-hour uh, period, which is great. We have great students. <laughs> um, these, this is a little bit about our classes that we offer beginning literacy. This is for students who come in and uh, maybe they have no back academic background at all. Uh, so maybe they just really don't know how to read or write, or maybe they do have academic background, but it's in Arabic or it's in um, Japanese. <laughs> And so some of those students come in and they maybe some of them are not even familiar with the Roman alphabet. Some of them are not familiar with reading from left to right. So we start there, capitals and lowercase letters, reading from left to right, punctuation, that kind of thing. Um, so that would be our beginning literacy class. The other courses are, are just leveled English courses. Um, where we're teaching basic reading, speaking, listening, and writing. Um, we always teach grammar and vocabulary as well. We have citizenship course uh, as well. So citizenship is integrated into all of those. But we also have a specific course for those who really want to get their citizenship and that's what they want to concentrate their time in. And career connections. Um, and, in addition to all of those, we have what's called an IET, Integrated Education and Training Program. These are programs that actually our students can walk out the door with credentials. So they're done with English language scaffolding, and uh, we can help them with that. But those two, we have a digital literacy course uh, and industrial manufacturing skills. And on this industrial manufacturing skills, we actually partner with employers who are currently hiring uh, for lean manufacturing positions. So everybody who goes through that, they get their NCRC uh, certificate. Um, they get the certificate on machine timing and basic machine components. And then they get an interview for an open job position. So, and that's going really, really well. That's a good partner. Any questions there? Six and names of some of those partners. Uh, Olympus, which is a medical technology company, KTG Kruger. I'm not sure if you guys, a lot of them are <laughs> kind of uh, Corel Brands has hired for us and interviewed. Um, and we've had a couple others, but the ones that have kind of come back and, and been really good partners are those. Yeah. Just want to give them props. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, we vet those programs. Um, they have to start at the very lowest at $12 an hour, but be willing to progress the uh, employee to at least 15 within the first year. They have to offer full-time uh, permanent positions. So we're not doing temp agencies with benefits. And then they also have to have a planned trajectory for career advancement. So that's what we require of the companies that work with us on that. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Okay, uh, so one of our challenges is every student who comes in has a different set of skills. And when we are assessing them, like we have course one, two, three, four, and that kind of course one will have level one reading, writing, listening, speaking. Course two will have level two reading, writing, listening, speaking. But really, when our students come in, they have these skills in kind of a different smattering. And so what we see is we have the oral skills, which are speaking and listening, written, which is writing and reading. 
and then the expressive, so how we give information, speaking and writing in our receptive listening and reading. And what we usually find is when our students come in and test and give us that information, they usually are higher in either one column or one row than they are the other. So for instance, we have, we have a lot of Buddhist monks who come to us and the tradition of Buddhist monks is a lot of like academic reading and writing and some of them have studied. So we find that their written skills are really high, but maybe they don't match with where they are in their oral skills. Um, so that can be kind of a challenge. So we place our students the best we can and then we have to differentiate to give them whatever they need um, within that classroom. Uh, kind of the trajectory of service, start out at intake. Intake is one of my favorite things to be involved in. Um, I'm the director, so I don't always, sometimes I have other things I have to do. But um, I remember meeting Naomi at intake and just, <laughs> it's always so fun to meet our students and hear what's going on. But what the best part of intake is we sit down with them and we do a little oral interview. Uh, that interview has a couple of purposes. We can assess how well they can understand what we're asking them, their ability to speak back to us. But my favorite question is we ask, why do you want to study English? And uh, that question just tells us so much about where a student has been and what they're looking for. And then we can kind of assess like, is this the best program for them, which will always offer services. But if I hear something that doesn't align with what we're doing, I might be able to refer them to maybe a place where they can really get that or accomplish that goal. Um, but also it helps us judge how do we need to change or alter our program to fit our students' needs. And we get to hear a little bit about those life stories that way. After that, uh, we assign their class and then while they're in class, we do student advising. So we'll meet with them and talk about their goals and see what we can do to help them. Uh, at post-test, we usually see that they have gone up a level and we give out uh, certificates for that so that they can show employers and uh, other people that have that credential with them. And then from there, we can also refer to our personal and career development workforce or the AJC's American Job Centers in order to help them get where they need to go. Uh, and then we just continue to support. We have a lot of people who come, maybe they get one level gain, they go on back to work and then they come back later and they're like, oh, you know, like now I'm at this level in my job. I think I need to boost up this vocabulary or now I'm using a radio and I have to hear through the radio what my boss is saying and so I want to work more on some of those oral skills or things like that. So we get a lot of kind of repeat customers. Uh, okay, so student population. I feel like this is really the best part. I give out a lot of information but everybody really wants to know about the students. So we currently have uh, 200 students who are actively participating. Uh, they represent over 40 countries, so it's really a pretty, uh, that was reflected whenever we did our poll at the beginning, people said differences and diversity, yes, so we have over 40 countries just in our program. Uh, the top three countries represented are Venezuela, Mexico, and Yemen, so uh, those three are our top. Uh, approximately 40% of our students hold bachelor's and master's degrees from their native country. So did that surprise any of you? Yeah. Um, and so when we talk about, that's one of the things that we're really working on is skilled immigrants and how to get them at it. Because in Memphis, you can walk through the door and get a job at a warehouse picking or packing or one of those things, uh, driving a short lift, short lift pretty easily. So one of the things we really work on is helping our students who come in and they're like, oh, I was, a, I was an engineer in my home country. Uh, so how do we get them out of driving that forklift and into something that's more sustainable and compatible with their credentials and their experience? So uh, 
that's definitely something that in our community partners, uh, we all work on that together. Um, and I, I mentioned the reasons that people want to study. The most number one reason people will say, I want to study for my career. I want to get a better job or I want to move up in the job I'm in. Um, or to become a citizen um, and then to help their child with school work. Questions here? Okay, so um, fortunately, I have two students who came with us today, and um, I'm going to start by just asking them a few questions, and then we'll, let, we'll open it up and you guys can ask questions as well. So, um, Naomi and Maria, would you come on up? So, um, of course, my perspective is someone who works in the program. I'm the program director. Um, but Maria and Naomi have the real perspective, and, and Frank as well as an immigrant, uh, on what it's like to study with us or what their perspective is um, having moved to the United States. So I'll start out by asking a few questions, and then we can take it from there, and you guys can ask more questions. So, um, so first of all, can you tell us where you're from? Naomi, you want to start? Okay, my name is Naomi. I'm from Vietnam. My name is Maria. I'm from Venezuela. And uh, how long have you been in the U.S.? Like, when did you move to the U.S.? Yes, I have been in the U.S. Almost one month. I was in Michigan for uh, I have been in Michigan for six months, and then after we moved to Memphis, almost we have been in Memphis for one year. Maria, how about you? And we are Asians in the United States, and we live uh, before we live in, in Texas. Uh, for eight months after we moved to Memphis, and we have for different reasons, but the principal reason was that we want to learn uh, or improve the English. We want to learn English because in Texas is more difficult. And I want, personally, I want that my son uh, can speak. Uh, and he, he, he learned so fast in, in his school. I was six months <laughs> so fast. <laughs> it was four years. Four years? I don't know. Four years. Okay, so Diego keeps you on your toes. He's a good man, I can tell. So, um, can you talk a little bit about why you decided to leave Japan and Venezuela and come to the U.S.? Uh, actually, I didn't have a choice. So, because my husband is working in the U.S., so that's I I was following him. Yes. How old are you? And in that case, uh, we. Thinking about the future of my own sons, a better future for all sons, and we thought that here is a good country for, for, for our family and for my son. And, and my country has a, a lot of problems now, and, and just we follow, follow away for a better opportunity for us. Yes. Opportunity for support. Okay. Um, so, uh, can you tell a little bit about what your job, back, your working background, and educational background was in your country? So, how much education did you have, and what did you do? So, actually, I was I was in the hygienist in Japan, so I went to technical school, and then I got. For just 
Dr. Kandere. Also, I have a yoga instructor. So also, I have a certification of yoga. So I, and, uh, I love my job, of course. And Dr. Kandere is a yoga instructor. And, um, after came to where I try to I want I I want to be better in the West, but it too too much too big too too different. So then I was a little disappointed. But now I try to do something I can do, you know, even better assistant for some one year or yeah, so, um, yeah, so, Naomi, your certificate was not valid, like your license in Japan was not valid here, right? Yeah, so, so you have to kind of start over again or find another way, even though you've been working in that field. Yeah, so I was looking for the Oh, uh, tuition? Tuition is too expensive. Yes. Because I'm for a country, I cannot get any financial aid. Right. And then I have to go very two years. Right. Yeah. It's very much. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is expensive. Education is very expensive here in the U.S. Maria, what about for you? Uh, well, I I I have a degree in uh, Germany. Degree. Uh, I has I I have been working in my country for ten years, around ten years, and writing for the newspaper and. I was teacher too because I I student for kindergarten too and my daughter for five years and and here what well, it's like like now I mean, my degree you now is no it's a bit for and not just my degree yes of course my English I can I, I don't have the the ability for uh, uh, a good reading or, or, or speaking for for some young German or mortician maybe. But for this reason I, I am not a program for improve my English or for keep learning English every day, every every time that I can. And I know that my 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 degree no is available but uh, I Think that I can start over because we are young and, we <laughs> and now is my goal, and I start uh, uh, I start a uh, way for keep for forget my my high school my high school diploma. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and now uh, I am so close to get my diploma in high school. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so excited because maybe I can go uh, to the college someday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the United right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the how about what has your experience been with the Hope Works English classes? Okay. So actually Hope Works helps me a lot because in the beginning when I was uh, when I came here during the COVID, so I didn't know anybody. And then my husband is very busy, he's not in house. And actually I was crying. Oh. <laughs> I really surprised because I don't you know my personality, right? Yes. <laughs> super oh. super engineering. Oh, <laughs> I need this word or I learn this word 
because now I meet people uh, and then I try to looking for like a magic website and then so, uh, so uh, the, uh, some phrase maybe I can meet some people but nothing and then I I I contacted Hogwarts mm -hmm. and then they said you can come to the building and I went to there so I took the test mm -hmm. I think <laughs> that's the you no know, I met the people who was in Hogwarts the people was were first time I met in Memphis Oh, first yeah. time you met in Memphis. I, right. I was really happy because oh my god, I can I can speak people now. Yeah. <laughs> and then so I was really excited, but they said they don't have a, any class in person. So I I really disappointed <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, I'm not me too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did the a class on Zoom. And then, but still, I have many free time because I, I, I cannot walk here. And then, so I I took another yoga certification in US on which I can take the I can take online. So I think. It was a good opportunity for me because if uh, I didn't have at that time, I didn't have a chance to get that certification. So uh, now I don't know. It, I think it everything is all right. Yes, everything's good. And I remember. So Naomi started during the pandemic. It was just online classes. And um, they developed such a good dynamic, even <laughs> through Zoom, though. And I remember um, whenever we started having a few little things at the building, and uh, you met Paulina, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, in person, like, I've never <laughs> seen you. And they were old friends that had never met face to face. So it was kind of neat to see that dynamic develop online, but then transfer to in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maria, what has your experience been with her? You've been with us since 2019, right? At HopeWorks? It's one been a couple of years. Okay, one year. One year last February. Last February, February. yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, no, for me, uh, I, I really feel so uh, grateful to be part of the whole work because really they really, really helped me. And, and when I come come here, I I I I I call it call it call it call golden golden Could not call not understand English. Could not. Could not. You got that spelling in your head, don't you? And, and it was so really difficult for me to um, have a, a conversation, uh, simple, simple uh, communication with other people. And in Hogwarts, I can learn and, 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 and speak and you know, listen. And, and, and now I know it's really good, but I can understand when, uh, when maybe someone told me something. <coughs> And I, uh, in Howard, um, uh, with Howard, I, I feel relate, I feel relatable, relatable, confidence, confidence. confidence. Yes, I, I feel confidence to the, to the meet people or, or, or confidence to the, do the next step in, step in my step. life, step, thank you, <laughs> step in my life, like, like study, like yes, like looking for a better job, or, or um, and also thank, uh, thanks to the Howard, I can, I can, I, I have access 
access a different program yeah. and uh, uh, actually I, I, I did a couple of course and I have now I had a, a couple of certificate that I know uh, they, they can uh, help me for the found job in the future. And, and I feel so, so happy and grateful. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, and they are great, great, great teachers. I love it. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, and I'm so happy, like Naomi, that I, I can meet the people and your friends because we, uh, I, I know, I didn't know mm -hmm. knew the people before, but now I, I have a friends in different countries and I can, can um, learn about them. Yes. And I, I have to say, she's right. Our our teaching staff, fantastic. We have yes. they're all certified teachers, but I mean, also just love the students. They're engaging. They're personable. They create good classroom um, environment. So we have really good teaching staff. Um, well, thanks. And I just want to say. Uh, you guys have done a great job speaking, like using lots of different comments. <laughs> Structure sometimes are complex and using different verb tenses and things like that. It's tough and you guys are fantastic and well done. So um, we, have, we have maybe a few minutes for some questions. If you guys have any questions or that you would like to ask our students. Well, was it difficult for either of you to come to this country? Did it take a long time? Work it out? What difficult what? Was it difficult to come to this country? To come to the US? Ah, uh, what is it? Was it difficult? Okay. Um, and for me the for me the first three, the fifth, the more difficult it, it was leave my family, my mom, maybe, yeah. Yes, and after uh, language. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And some sometimes about uh, culture is different. So sometimes uh, is that like uh, correct or wrong? So even what to say maybe blue blue is a different. So yeah. can I use this word or not? Yes. So that that is a very yeah. struggle. Yes, learn, learn the English. It's so difficult to <laughs> your language. <laughs> but we try yes. every day, right? How did you learn that HopeWorks was a resource? Did, I think I heard you, Naomi, say that you saw something online. But how did you learn of HopeWorks as a resource? How did you find it? How did you find, did you find HopeWorks? Oh, online? Yeah, so I, 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 I Google it and then the free English school in memory and then they popped up. <laughs> I listened for uh, from the other friends told me about the, the homework and, and after I listened about that I, I, I went to the office for an enroll and made the test, the first test. Yeah. Right? Um, I just wanted to thank Maria and Naomi, first of all, you are both inspiring and I just am astounded by your courage and your resilience and perseverance and as an inspiration to me. So I want to thank you. Um, and I also wanted to ask Nicole, you know, just thinking about Naomi's certificate as a dental hygienist and Maria's degree in journalism and all of that and their experience, do you think do you know if there are any programs in our country or any headway to where you know people who come with such wonderful yes. skills, yeah. you know, might be able to better work in their fields? Is there anything being done? Yeah, so there there, there are efforts. Uh, so there's you can get your uh, degrees and certificates yeah. translated. Um, really, the only place I even know that does it is out of New York City, and that's World Education Services, and it's just very expensive. So for the most part, it's cost prohibitive for, for most people. Um, and 
uh, and then different degrees and different certificates or licenses are accepted at different rates. So like being anything medical is one of the most difficult. <laughs> um, that's really difficult. But uh, we talk about trying to find some entry points to go into the same field if it's not, uh, if it's not, so like if we have an attorney, uh, maybe you can become a legal assistant and get in that way. Um, so some of those things, but it is, it's really difficult. And then on top of getting, uh, we also have an infrastructure problem. So for a lot of countries that our students come from, uh, maybe there's not as much infrastructure now as there used to be. So they may not be able to access their transcripts in order to have them translated. And then um, there's also just even unconscious bias. Like there could be outright discrimination, but a lot of what we see is just people are not comfortable. Like if you have two candidates, even if this one is more qualified, but you don't, you don't understand their accent perfectly, or you're worried about uh, how are they going to interact with the, our other colleagues? Will they be able to understand them and accept them in their culture? People just default to what they're comfortable with and what they know. And so those are some of the things that we are actively working on uh, with particularly with the Mid-South Immigrant Integration Network, which I mentioned, which is really a network of a lot of organizations and we're working on that specifically, but it's a long, slow journey <laughs> for sure. You said, uh, Nicole, that y'all currently have 200 students. Mm -hmm. What's the capacity? Could you get, is it funding based? You know, sort of determined or? Right. So we actually, we just grow and I just, continue to ask for more money. <laughs> so uh, we have not really met a capacity, but we get a capacity we add a site or I'll write another grant or uh, we'll divide up our classes differently. Um, so we haven't really hit that. Now within a classroom, I found that once you get up above like 22 students, you start to lose some of that effectiveness. So much of what we do is interactive. It's not to sit behind your desk and listen to a teacher thing, but we do a lot of uh, activities. So, but yeah, we just, if, as long as we have students coming, we'll keep adding on and doing what we've got to do. But we might hit it at some point, Michael, I'm not sure. <laughs> Both said that you live in other places in this country first. Do you come to Memphis because you get family here or your husband found a job here or what what brought you to Memphis? Uh, for me, so my husband was in Toyota. So the first the first week that he was working in Toyota which in Michigan. And then he uh, actually and that's what he transfer was he yeah, transferred yeah, okay. the company. Yes. Uh, so and then he moved to another department, which in Arkansas. And then so, so we don't want to live in Arkansas. <laughs> 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 she said they didn't want to live in Arkansas. <laughs> no, it's okay. She yeah. doesn't want to live in Arkansas. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we found the Madu Island. Okay, it's across to Arkansas. That's why we live on Madu Island. I'm really happy. I love it. <laughs> How about you, Maria? Well, uh, when, when I was in, I don't know for for work and for the we want in math, in English, and in piano. A little, little person speaking Spanish, and that is more challenge for us. And, and if we want, no, we need learn English. And I really, really want or that my son speak English. But I don't think yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Before no. <laughs> now I, I am so uh, relaxing just yeah. speak English. <laughs> yeah, so we because we really had a lot of opportunities. Sure. Yeah. Right. He's so young, had a long life, I hope so. Yes. One more question. He 
but there are six discussions to dis, uh, to questions to answer, discussions to have over the course of that time uh, to help our students kind of get an idea of what that field is like here in Memphis, what's local, and how do we how do I get into that? Uh, we have language partners, so if for eight weeks you're uh, paired with somebody, it's eight hours total, um, and you just meet and talk with the student. And basically the purpose of this is so that our students can develop relationships with Americans. Sometimes our students mostly know people from their country, and here they are living in the United States, but they may have never been invited into somebody's home. And you wouldn't have to invite, you could meet for a cup of coffee, but they may not have a real view of what a typical American life is like. But it also gives them the opportunity to speak English because as Maria said, sometimes uh, people speak mostly their native language. Um, and maybe they work with people who speak their same language or that's what their community is. So this kind of gets them out and um, gives them some friendships and relationships outside of their community. And then uh, last one is prayer. So uh, prayer partners, you just receive prayer requests or the things that we're praying over and you pray over them. <laughs> so that, that one's pretty easy. Uh, there's really no accountability or an amount of time or anything like that with that. Uh, but if you're interested in any of those things, I have some lists as well as my business card over here. You can pick those up if you want to think about it or you can put your name on one of these lists and we'll reach out to you willing to help in any of those ways and we'll get that out to the people online as well so um i'm gonna and always i hope that if we have the opportunity to do the have a relationship relationships or with the with the people's native native people uh, French, uh, we can we can improve uh, fast uh, the English because we can uh, talk and learn about their theirs and, and practice every every uh, with the right? Yes, and in normal conversations, not contrived conversations in a classroom or something like that. So that really. That's it. Thank you guys so much. My card is over here and those lists are over there. So feel free to just grab one. You can reach me anytime. And thanks again. Thank you. Just a reminder, everyone, next week, I believe it's July 4th. So <laughs>